Praise the Lord. He said, Praise the Lord. We we'll rise up on our feet and commit ourselves to the Lord. The Lord has brought us to the retreat for a purpose. And you want that purpose to be fulfilled in your life. I want you to raise your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, I came here to be blessed. I came here to receive the power for the hour. And you want to tell the Lord that all the power you need, all the authority you need, all the anointing you need, everything that will make you victorious, bold, courageous to face the challenges that may be in front of us the rest of this year and the rest of your life you want to tell the Lord he'll give you the power for the hour courage for the hour protection for the hour The strength for the hour. That the reason why you come to the retreat, why the Lord has organized something like this for you, that the Lord will fulfill it and grant you the power for your hour. That every challenge you are facing, all the problems you brought to this retreat, that the Lord Himself in His mighty strength and power will help you to drop everything here. That you will not go back home the same like you came. not just be another retreat another conference another gathering together like it used to be a new strength a new power a new courage a new faith a new assurance the power for your hour. Pray that mountains so move away from your life. Sicknesses will flee from your life. Affliction, attack. Enemy's hands that God will cut them off, that this retreat will be a breakthrough retreat for you. That all those things will be seeking spiritual strength spiritual ability and skill they have eluded you for a long time miss them for a long time that this will be the moment when the power of God from heaven will roll away all those challenges you've been facing and grant you the power for your hour. That the Lord will pour the spirit of supplication, intercession, spirit of prayer, 
upon us as a church. These are difficult times, terrible times. That the Lord Himself, His power is love. We come in the midst of His people, glory and majesty. Solving all problems were brought in here. In Jesus' name we pray. A great God in heaven will thank you and bless you for this moment. Thank you for joining mercies you granted everyone. Thank you for bringing your people here, young and old. Thank you, Lord, for all the locations where we gather together. Lord, we pray you visit us in a very special way in Jesus' name. We pray that from this night your power will descend. The anointing that breaks the yoke will mightily present among us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, you open the windows of heaven and send the rain of blessing the showers of blessing down upon everyone in Jesus' name. We pray that you'll be glorified and magnified. The church will be edified. And you bless everyone participating with us in this wonderful retreat in Jesus' name. We pray that no stone will be left unturned. No sickness will be left unhealed. No problem will be left unsolved. No sinner will remain lost and sinful in Jesus' name. And your power for living a life that is victorious, you grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Make this the best retreat we ever had in Jesus' name. We pray that when it comes to the end of the retreat and we're going back home, we'll have testimony in every mouth, joy in every heart, happiness and fulfillment of your promises in everyone in Jesus' name. Be with your people, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you very much. You can see that I welcome you once again to this retreat. This is a retreat. The Lord has brought us together in this location and also all over this land, all over Nigeria, all over the countries of Africa and even beyond Africa. We're listening to the same thing following the same program and the power that God is manifesting here is manifesting everywhere. You are going to find that you are going to discover power for your hour. Say power for my hour. Say power for the present moment. It will come upon your life in Jesus name. We are looking at this message now. Power for perilous times. Power for perilous times. The times in which we live. Dangerous times, perilous times, difficult times, trying times. It's like this moment, this hour, this time, the devil is doubling up and is trying to maneuver the lives of people. And many people do not know what to do, where to go, where to face. And because of such a terrible time, a trying time, that's why we have come together so that whatever comes away, you are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 5, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And these are the last days. The signs will see. 
the news we hear, the happenings around us, the disasters all over the world, some caused by human beings, some just natural disaster. Everything we see telling us that these are dangerous, perilous, difficult, and trying times. And the Spirit of God says, this know also. Look at verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. It's telling us that as we see the difficulties of our time, the temptations of our time, the trials of our time, many, many people become religious, super religious, but even in the religion, they have not discovered the power. That's why it says they have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And it says we should not be in such a company. We should discover the hour and the power and the anointing that breaks the yoke so that we will be as victorious as the Lord wants us to be. I pray you'll not be among the people that have a form of godliness, religion, without the power. For the present hour, we're going to have the power. I said we're going to have the power. In fact, you'll see that from chapter 1 of this epistle, the Lord is reminding us what we need is the power. Look at it in verse, chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. The tendency is for people to fear when you see the peril, the danger, the trials and the trouble. And all the things the world is going through. The, 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 the tendency is to be afraid. That's why some people ever take their lives because they're depressed. They don't think that there's any solution for the problems they have in the present hour. But it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of what? Of power and of love and of a sound mind. I pray that you'll discover that before you go in Jesus' name. It tells us in chapter 4, chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, I'm reading there from verse 3. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The time will come in all the religious gatherings and societies when they will not endure sound doctrine. That is, they see the problems are there, the troubles are there, the dangers are there, the period is there. But then, the sound doctrine that will bring us out of such a problem, bring us out of such a situation, what the Lord has sent from on high is inspired word. It's infallible word. The word of power and the word of deliverance, the word of salvation that he has brought unto us. They will not endure. They will not accept. I pray that our gathering will not be a gathering like that. Religious gathering that will not accept the word of God. That will not give in to the word of God. That will not believe the word of God. That will not endure the word of God. You see, such a gathering will be in vain, will be useless, will not have any value, will not have any authority or deliverance for the people. It's when the people hear the word of God, sound doctrine, and they keep their heart the lie. And they believe that word that they hear, that is what brings the victory. But this is the time in which we are living, but the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But now, those of us who have the power, who have the courage, or the boldness, I don't have the success, the authority to stand at such a time like this. In verse 5, but watch thou in all things, and deal afflictions. The power to endure, I pray God will give it to every one of us. And then it says, do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. As we gather here, evangelism continues. You find people around you, 
and they live as if they do not know the Lord. They act as if they do not know the Lord. You call them aside and you evangelize. You win their souls to the Lord. And say, my friend, is this your first time of coming here? Do the work of an evangelist. And what do you know? What have you learned? And then you share the word of God together and lead them to know in the Lord. And if there are backsliders around you, that they've been coming to retreats before, but then they have allowed the troubles of the day, the trauma of the day, the trials of the day, to sway them up their feet. And now they are backsliding. And you see that from their doubts and their misgivings and all the things they say, their complaints. Then you bring them aside, do the work of an evangelist unashamedly, with authority, with boldness and with courage. It tells us there, when you have the power for the hour, you'll be able to share the word of God and you'll say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that gospel is the power of God unto salvation unto everyone who believes. Look at verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil word. Give me a good day. Amen. The Lord will deliver us. And you in particular, the Lord will deliver you in Jesus' name. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will pre preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. And everybody search. Amen. Amen. Power for perilous times. As we look at the times in which we are living and what the scripture is telling us, we're looking at this, number one, man's perplexity in the present hour. Man's perplexity in the present hour. If you're listening to the news, you know that people are perplexed. They, pro they are kind of preferred all solutions they know how. But there's no solution. And the problems are still there. They've taken this route and this route and that route, and the problems are still there. Personal problems, they're increasing. Family domestic problems, they're increasing. Community problems, clashes, they're increasing. Nation against nation, they're increasing. And all these disasters, they're increasing. And now man is perplexed for the present hour. But thank God, there's a solution here today. A solution for you. A solution for me. A solution for the people of God. You'll discover it in Jesus' name. Number two, manifold promises for the painful hour. Manifold promises for the painful hour. When things are tough, when things are difficult, when everybody is falling, when everybody is giving up, the Lord has given us many promises. And by those many promises, you are going to be victorious. Number three, marvelous preservation in the perilous hour. Marvelous preservation in the perilous hour. Number one, man's perplexity in the present hour. As you look at that passage I read to you just now, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1, this know also that in the last days perilous time shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves that's what makes the time difficult selfishness self-centeredness people wanting to override overrun other people destroy other people that they may have their own way they want to make everybody unhappy that they might be happy they want to make themselves successful by, make other people by making other people fail. They want to stand alone by making other people fall. That's the danger of the hour. Nobody is thinking about the happiness of others. The joy of others. The prosperity of others. It says men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, 
unthankful, unholy. Nobody is grateful nowadays. I mean, people outside there. Whatever parents do for children, no gratitude. Whatever authorities do for their subjects, no gratitude. Whatever any government does for the populace, no gratitude. Whatever any church does for their members, no gratitude. That is the problem. And then it says unholy. There's no desire, no passion for holiness. And it is that that makes the human nature, the depraved nature, the sinful nature, the Adamic nature to come to the front because men are unthankful, ungodly, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, whatever promise they make to one another, they soon break the promise. And then it says, the false accusers, incontinent, fierce, that's related to violence. That's why you find many people fighting today on the street, they fight. In their homes, they fight. We call it domestic violence. Breaking things, destroying things. They get angry so easily. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady. That's another word for being stubborn. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. They want ease. They want pleasure. Rather than watching the will of God or the word of God. It says these are the people, they have a form of godliness. But they deny the power thereof. From such, what should we do? Tell me out loud. Turn away. Do it. Turn away. Luke chapter 21. Man's perplexity in this present hour. Man's perplexity in the present hour. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. See the sea and the waves roaring. Those are the very words of Jesus. He tells us, as we come near the end of the age, as we come near the time of Christ coming again, he says, there will be perplexity. What we see on land, what we see in the sky, what we see on the sea, what we see in every community. He says, these will be perilous times that will make people to be perplexed. They're so perplexed and confused. They didn't know what to do. In verse 26, a man's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The powers in the sky, in the stars, of the sun, of the moon. It says, it shall be shaken. That's why it's saying the Spirit of God is telling us that the days in which we 